We're here with Florida State edge rusher Jared Verse. First question, we're here in Tallahassee and not some NFL camp. So <laughs> what went into the decision to be back here this year? It was a lot they went into it. My main factor was I did want to come back. I wanted to play with all my guys, everything like that. But I did want to develop myself as a player. I wanted to become stronger, faster. I wanted to get my hands more violent. There was just so much work I wanted to do on myself before I take that step to the next level. How much of it is just being so new to the position? You were a high school tight end. You go to Albany. They make you a defensive end. COVID, you gained 40 pounds. Like you had, you didn't even play defensive end until 2021. Yeah. <laughs> it was to me it was uh I always felt more natural at the end mm -hmm. like Titan was fun I had a lot of fun I love scoring touchdowns yeah. love being in the end zone doing my little touchdown celebration but I just always felt more natural at the end I felt like all right this is where my talents are best used and going to Albany they gave me the option to do tight end or defensive end I was like I'll, I'll do the end like <laughs> didn't even hesitate <laughs> what what was the touchdown celebration like I'm just in case Norvell has a trick play for oh, you it was always the worst thing like it was always horrible because we had our band in the end zone so I always run I'd score I'd see the band I'd be like you get loud <laughs> and like five of them would get loud because we'd be winning I'll be like uh they're like what what song you want us to play <laughs> we didn't know you're taking requests right now so yeah that's that's the hardest thing for a guy with, you know, but you can do it as a as a DN because you can sack somebody and you're allowed the uh, extemporaneous celebrate. Yeah. They don't throw a flag on you if it's just, you know, expression of joy yeah. right there after the sack. <laughs> now I started getting in my couple of little celebrations, a little bowery, you know, I my little throw my arms out. I, I got my celebration game up a little bit. <laughs> well, you you probably will want to celebrate if, if you wind up in a, with a sack or two in this first game because you're playing against couple really good tackles in, in in Campbell and Jones what's it like knowing all offseason that you're going against some dudes that you're probably going to see them on Sundays too yeah no it's good I love it because I believe iron sharpens iron I've always wanted to get better as a player the only way to get better is to play the best here we have some of the best tackles in the country I, I argue with anyone on that but then going up against those guys who you know they're labeled as some of the best guys in the country they were freshmen last year now they're sophomores they're a lot stronger they've learned so much i'm like right, i can't wait to see how much they've grown for myself because film and then real life is two different things what was that lsu game like for you last year the first game at, you know in in this environment versus playing at albany it was surreal when i walked in like i, <laughs> I walk out to do my like little warm-up I, oh, yeah. I, I look around i'm like the lights are all shining everyone's there i'm like well, what the heck is <laughs> i'm like i feel out of place i'm like all right i gotta lock in but then like after that first snap like i was nervous like i don't really get nervous before plays but like, i was a little nervous right before it after that first snap, it all just went away. Like everything just disappeared, and then I just played. How much has changed in terms of how comfortable you are in this defense and how comfortable you are with everybody else right now versus this time last year? Uh, believe it or not, when I first came in, I was quiet. Okay. <laughs> I just didn't know anybody wasn't going to yeah. come around being loud and like exuberant and everything like that. But as I got more comfortable, I got to know guys like Trey Benson. I got to know guys like Amari Gaynor before he transferred. I got to know Fabian Lovey. I got to know all these guys. I just became more comfortable with them. I'm being around these guys, I'm like, all right, like this is truly my family. What's the feeling like when you get to a place like this from Albany? Is it is it? Am I going to be good here? Do do you know, or do you need to get out on the practice field to figure that out? A lot of people ask me, was I nervous to get here like before this? And I was like, no, nah, I wasn't nervous. Like I always felt like I belonged here. I always felt like I belonged to play against the best. Florida State has the best. I was trying my hardest. I got here. I practiced hard. I worked hard. I wanted to show these guys, hey, I'm FCS. I'm going to work. I'm going to like bring y'all game up with me. So let's let's talk about your move to defensive end because that was something that that they planned at Albany. You redshirted, and then the the pandemic happens. You've got no season. You're at home. Your dad orders weights. <laughs> your mom and dad are cooking you meals every day. Like how you gained forty pounds? How how did you do that? So it was mainly my dad. He went about the weights because me and my dad loved to work out. Like that's why I started working out before I even played football. I always worked out with my dad just to get stronger as a kid. And we didn't have any weights at home. The gym closed down. My dad, like, it was, like, day two of, like, him not waking out. He was, like, I was, I was benching a bed at first because, like, in my room, we had a futon. <laughs> they could, like, lay out into a bed. So I lay out into a bed. And I get underneath and I just bench Were you it. benching the whole bed, the whole yeah. futon? Yeah, because, I like, I didn't have any weights. <laughs> was there so not I, a truck that you could just lift <laughs> So I was doing that. Then me and my little sister, we'd, like, push my car and everything like that. Like, we were doing anything to get some yeah. work in. My dad was, like, I'm going to go buy some weights. Like, I found somebody selling them and everything like that. I was, like. I like go get the like get them today. <laughs> he went. He drove like two hours for him. I was gonna say this is a pan. You could not find weights anywhere. Oh no! He drove like two hours for him. Came back with like a bench, some bands, uh, the one two one hundred twenty pound dumbbells, two thirty pound dumbbells, jump rope, like a bunch of stuff. 
it was like so weird and stuff. Like none of it like meshed together. I was like, I got to figure out something. So you had to figure out how to do. It. So you, you wait. You had 120 pound dumbbells, mm -hmm. which you can't. Most people can't even lift those. Yeah. So you got those, and you got like 30s. Yeah, 230. <laughs> so I'd be like, all right, like, because there was like no medium weight. Like yeah. it was like light, and it was like super heavy. I'm like, there's no medium, so I got to figure this out. <laughs> you, you've just you've probably invented a new workout craze. Like everyone's <laughs> looking for the, the the secret. So the secret's gonna be lift heavy lift light alternate <laughs> it, honestly it was just like a work ethic thing like, i was never big in like motivational videos or anything yeah. but i watched this one video and kept talking about like if you want to succeed as bad as you want to breathe and like, i was like i want to win pretty bad like i want to <laughs> yeah. win bad so all i did was like like i just lived in the weight room we'll be right back with more of our interview with florida state defensive end jared verse right after this word from game time because if you want to see jared and the seminoles play against LSU on Sunday, you can still get tickets. Yes, the game's sold out. Yes, it's a top 10 matchup. Yes, the whole world will be watching and everybody wants to be in the building in Orlando. But you can be there too with game time. It is the place to get last minute tickets. So here's how it works. You download that game time app. You find Orlando. You click Florida State football. You find your ticket. You can get there. Look, it's a big game. It's not cheap. 176 bucks though. Not terrible. Not terrible for the game of this magnitude. 176 bucks. You can be in there. You click that ticket in the game time app. What comes up? It's a photo of the field. And you're thinking, oh, well, that's the field where they're going to play. No, that is the view from your seat that you'd be buying. And if you look down, there's a couple more clicks. It's all it takes. And that ticket is yours. That easy to get last minute tickets. And oh, by the way, if you would like to transfer them on game day to your friends, you can do it by texting. It's not complicated. Game time makes this entire process easy and stress-free. So whatever game you want to see this weekend or concert or comedy show, download that game time app, use the code staples and you get $20 off your first purchase. That's code staples, $20 off your first purchase. Go get yourself some tickets right now. There's big games this weekend, guys. It's that easy. Last minute tickets, lowest price, guaranteed at game time. And so you you start playing DN in 2021, and it was pretty immediate. I, Adam Fuller, your DC now, told me that basically anybody who played Syracuse that year, because Albany played Syracuse, yeah. <laughs> saw you and was like, who the hell is that? <laughs> when When you entered the portal, what was your phone like? And so I ended the portal. I officially ended at like two a.m. because I like had to fill out something and mm -hmm. everything like that. And I think at like seven a.m. they like officially put me in. About nine a.m. my phone was going crazy. Like, I'm getting calls from random numbers. I'm like, "Hello, hey, Jared, it's Adam Fuller." I'm like, "Adam Fuller, yeah, oh yeah, defensive coordinator." Plus, I'm like, "Whoa, whoa. <laughs> I'm like, whoa!" And I'm getting calls from like every coach, every recruiter, everybody across the board. I'm like, "This is like, like it was so much at once." I was like, "Yeah," and like it happened for like two weeks straight. And I was like, "Oh." How did you how did you d narrow it down and then decide on, on Florida State? So uh, when I went home after the season, after I left Albany, my mom, we had like a, in our dining room, we put up a whole bunch of boards, pros and cons of every team after our visits, every, like everyone we thought would be like a great fit for me or where I should go. And we slowly narrowed it down based on like position, based on need, based on what their defense was. Mm -hmm. If I liked the, like, if I felt like I messed with the coach, cause everyone I talked to, I had a great connection with, but if I felt like I was really seeing myself there, and it came down to Florida State and, like, two other schools. And I was, like, I kept looking. Every time I was, like, looking at the boards, I kept seeing Florida State. Like, I kept turning my head back to them. Like, any, I couldn't even think of any cons about them and everything like that. And when I came here, I met with Jermaine. Mm -hmm. I met That's with Kier. How mm -hmm. much did Jermaine Johnson's success in his one year here affect your decision? Oh, it was crazy because I'm, like, like, look at Jermaine. We took two different paths. Like, he went to Georgia first. Mm -hmm. And, like, he did what he did at Georgia and came down, came, uh, to, uh, like, down south to Florida State. And I'm, like, all right, like, we took a different path, but I'm talking to him. I'm like, what do you not like about here? He's told me his likes, his dislikes, everything like that. I'm like, all right, like, I can see myself in a place like this. Like, yeah. Somewhere where you feel like you truly belong because he, he loved it here. Yeah, because uh, what he wanted to it, you're right, it was completely different. He wanted mm. to prove he was an every-down player. Yeah. That wasn't going to happen at Georgia with seven other first-round drafts yeah. on the D-line. So he came down here and proved that. Yeah. And and I imagine the coaches were happy to show you that and say, here's how oh. we can feature you. And they love that. Yeah. <laughs> they love that. Yeah. <laughs> All right, we, so we got to talk about that. You mentioned earlier, you don't have a logo yet. Yeah. <laughs> but some little kid after a game gave you an idea for one. So, but 
put it out to all the all the aspiring graphic designers out there because I there's probably <laughs> somebody willing to do some work all for right. you. Hey, I need a good logo. I need something real nice, something that show my brand, some you know, very spy, you know, something like that, something that really goes crazy. I love logo. The, the kid was on to something though, because oh. it was a V, oh, yeah. which is the Roman numeral for five. Like this is now the kid was next level. The little kid came up to, up to me after the game. He's like, verse, like do verse, but then instead of an S, have a five, and the Roman numeral is already five yeah. V, and then like verse already has five letters. So I'm like, five just like makes a lot of sense. Well. I do remember there was a guy who wore number five here, won a Heisman Trophy. So, oh yeah, some guy back in there. Yeah, yeah I mean, something. what if that happened? <laughs> definitely need a logo. Oh, though. definitely need a logo. <laughs> so, well, how excited are you for this? Because it, this is something where you you guys have a lot of talent back. You know everybody. Everybody understands what you're capable of. As you go into this LSU game, how exciting is the possibility of what can happen this season. You think about it, the whole season, everyone's been talking about the, what we're able to do, what we're capable to do, what everyone's expecting. A lot of people are expecting us to go all the way, go the distance. And our main focus has always been, what can we do? And now we finally get that chance to showcase it. LSU is a very good team. You know, they were the top, one of the top teams in the SEC last year. They they have their, like, they want to come back and get us for what, what happened last year. We want to prove, all right, like, they got better, we got better too. So it's just like a big game in all factors, but I'm most excited just to see how much I've grown as a player. Like I came back for a reason. I feel like I've gotten faster, stronger. I've gained 10 more pounds. I feel like I've gotten so much like quicker. I feel like now it's time to showcase it. How do you do that when you, you how do you gain 10 pounds and not lose a step? Uh, so I was really, I talked to Coach Storms and that was my main focus because Coach Storms like really Your into the body. Oh, yeah. yeah. I went to talk to him. I'm like, Coach, what should like, what do you think I carry 260 with no problem? He's like, I think you're good, but like, we're going to take it. Like, let's try it. So I slowly gained weight. I gained like a couple pounds a month, like nothing crazy, no more than like two or three pounds a month. Slowly gained it up. And then like 260 came and it was two weeks ago. They came up to me and they were like, do you know what you ran the other day? I was like, nah, what was it? They were like, come in and see it. And they told me it was, this it was some crazy the, numbers. This is on the catapult? Like yeah. how many miles an hour you were running? Yeah, it was some crazy numbers. I was like, I went away then. I was about two, I think I was 259.7 or something like that. Like right there. I was like. All right, like I can carry 260 now, and now you got to keep it on during the season. That's yeah, a, that's, that's the biggest challenge. Yeah. <laughs> that's the biggest challenge. It's a it's a good problem to have though. That oh, means yeah. that means we're done playing football. It's coming off. So. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Well, Jared, good luck this season. And uh, oh, well, before we go, how do you deal with everybody expecting so much, not just of this team and what you could do, you know, in terms of a championship and that sort of thing, but of you saying, okay. We thought you were going to be a first rounder last year. Now you have to exceed that this year. My my goal has always been I've I've never been somebody like on the first on anybody's board. I've never been that player that like oh yeah we need him or anything like that before like I left Albany. So my main thing is I'm just going to keep doing me. I'm, I expect so much of myself. No one could ever expect more of me than, than I do of myself. No one's ever going to expect oh Jerry didn't do this well. Yeah, I expected more of myself. Like I did. I have to exceed it. I expected myself to do good last year. It wasn't good enough, so I, I have to do better. All right, Jared Verse, thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much for watching. Just a reminder, subscribe to this channel right here so you never miss an episode of Andy Staples on 3. And oh, by the way, watch all the other great videos on the On 3 Sports YouTube channel.